Hello, I'm Dave Doyle and welcome to GeoLearn and Fundamentals of Geodesy, Contemporary Geometric Datums Part 2. Uh, in the previous section I talked about the development of the, the most contemporary reference frame for the United States, the North American Datum of 1983 or NAD83. Uh, in this segment I want to talk to you about the development of the more international reference frame, the ITRF and WGS84, the World Geodetic System 1984, and how they do relate to NAD83 or don't relate to NAD83, as the particular case may be. So let's get started. I have an introduction here to most people. Most people, have most surveyors uh, and others involved with, with high level positioning, have never even really heard of these folks but sort of the international gold standard for positioning comes from this particular group, the International Earth Rotation and Reference System Service, or the IERS. As it says, they were established in 1987. They're headquartered in Paris. And the IERS is a collaborative organization that collects information from a multitude of partner organizations around the world. They themselves do not go out to the field, make these measurements. Uh, they rely on this multitude of national mapping and surveying organizations, such as the National Geodetic Survey or Geodetic Survey Canada, uh, research organizations such as NASA or other universities around the world, to provide them with a host of different kinds of geodetic positioning information coming from a number of different sources. And in a moment I will describe those sources. Uh, what we get from the IERS are earth rotation dynamics. That is things such as how does the earth rotate uh, or wobble on its axis, uh, often referred to as the Chandler wobble. Uh, what, what is the implication of that? Uh, our location, the d determination of the location of Earth geocenter, which is so vitally important working with space-based positioning tools. If we want to be in a consistent coordinate system with the GPS and other GNSS satellites, we want to be as close to Earth geocenter as possible. And it's virtually, almost virtually impossible for any one national institution to, to, do, to determine that. So by collaborating together internationally, we get a much better picture of the dynamics of the Earth. From the IERS, we get the, the International Terrestrial Reference System. Now the system uh, is that collection of physics that define how the Earth moves. Again, the wobble of the Earth on its axis, um, the, the issue of plate tectonic motions, these are all elements of that system. The system being a, a definition of where, what we would like to achieve. And out of that, through this collection and collaboration of information in a, in a multitude of different surveying methodologies, positioning methodologies, they provide the International Terrestrial Reference Frame. Now the frame is now the realization, if you will, or the characterization of that coordinate system. That is, there are certain what we would ca classically refer to as monuments, although they're not typically passive monuments as that we're used to. Uh, they may, they may um, be resolved in a number of different ways, such as a continuously operating reference station or the phase center of a VLBI um, antenna. But they have a physical uh, realization. And from that collection, they give us coordinates for stations around the world that are referred to as the International Terrestrial Reference Frame, or the acronym being the ITRF. The first one of these that they delivered uh, was in 1988, so one year after, uh, after they were established, two years after NGS published the NAD 83, which was released in 1986. 